welcome back to part two of this video series. In part two, we will be looking at gaming performance. We'll also bring out a new laptop, the XPS 14Z by Dell. This laptop is running an older generation processor, Sandy Bridge Core i7 dual core. You could pick this laptop up for about $800. I did install an SSD to give it a little bit more faster performance. And how much faster performance are we talking about? Well, before we do our gaming test, let's go ahead and do a boot test. So you guys can see the SSD performance on this laptop. Now, both of these laptops are running their native operating system. So you're gonna see OS X on Mac, and of course, Windows on Dell. And as you can see, Dell actually finished faster. Now let's go ahead and try that again with Windows. Now because Steam does not offer a lot of great games for Mac, we did have to install Windows in order to see the true performance or at least gaming performance when it came to these tests. So as you can see, the Dell XPS 14Z has actually loaded Windows quicker and we're still waiting on that MacBook Pro Retina display to kick in its four cores of power. Cue the elevator music. Do, 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 do. And it finished in about four to five seconds after. So let's go ahead and begin our gaming test. We're also going to be tracking the CPU temperatures. We wanna see how hot these cores can get just for reference and fun. The first notebook is the Samsung Ultrabook. I figured since it was the underdog, it should go first. Now this is a 3D Mark 11 test. It's basically a benchmark to see how well it performs. It really doesn't mean anything. It's just kind of numbers out there to put things in perspective. So don't expect really high FPS because this is a performance benchmark. So you're gonna see about two to three FPS when it comes to these notebooks, in some cases a little bit more. Now one of my favorite tests is the combined test where it takes a CPU and GPU and basically puts 100% workload. Now it'll be interesting to see how it compares to the other notebooks because the Samsung does not have a dedicated graphics card. Now the total 3D Mark score was 658 and that is very poor when you compare it to other strong gaming machines out there. The temperature was maxed out at 89, which is very cool. One of the cores hit 89 while the other one was 87. So that is very good when it comes to temperatures. Now let's go ahead and load Metro 2033. But before we do that, let's go ahead and reset the temperatures. I wanna see if gaming performance changes the temperatures any bit. And as you can see, we are getting an error and that's okay. It just means that we have an unsupported graphics card. This is a pretty graphic intensive game. I've installed FRAP, so pay attention to the top left hand corner. You could see the frame rates currently right about 20. We are going to change a couple settings here. I'm gonna go to the native resolution of 1600 by 900. I'm going to keep everything low and DirectX 9. So we are not running the latest version of DirectX X, which is not going to have like, you know, DirectX 11, Tessellation, and all those other cool things out there. So let's go ahead and start a new game to see the type of uh, gaming performance we can expect with this uh, Ultrabook. And it doesn't look very good when you look at those numbers up on the top left. We're getting very low 20s. And remember, everything is set to low right now. So it's going to be a question... Are you gonna be happy playing games at 20 frames per second? So let's go ahead and see if we change the settings a bit if uh, it gets any better. Now I'm gonna go ahead and drop the resolution a little bit to 1366 by 768 to see if it's a little bit more playable. And I already noticed a little bit jump in frames per second, but I'm not sure it's gonna be enough. And as you guys can see, on the top left, 20 frames per second is just not playable to me. I mean, some of you might think that this is a good, but when we kind of put a little bit more action into the uh, scene, it gets as low as 14, 15 frames per second. And that's to me is just uh, not good enough. So I'm going to definitely say we're going to pass on this. And for what it's worth, here are the temperatures. It maxed out at 86 degrees, but let's move on to the Dell. Now we're going to do the exact same thing with the Dell. We're going to be monitoring the temperatures and see how it fares. So the first graphic test, just to kind of give you guys an idea of the frames per second that we were getting. And it's a little bit under three or right at three. And we're just going to fast forward this a little bit more and show you the combined test just because it is my favorite test. 
And just to kind of, you know, put things in perspective, it's not that great either. You were getting about two. But remember, this is a performance test. 638 was a score which was lower than the Samsung. And how is that possible when this has a graphics card and the Samsung 9 series does not? Well, remember, this is still running Sandy Bridge and the Samsung 9 series is on an Ivy Bridge processor, which I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Let's go ahead and look at the thermal and see how that CPU was. And it was a maximum of 84 degrees, but let's go ahead and reset that while we start off Metro 2033. 1366 by 768 is a maximum resolution. Now, as you can see from the fraps, the frame rate is still very low. Going back to that, what I was saying earlier, Intel has made it known that their Ivy Bridge processor will be very competitive and as good as last generation Sandy Bridge with a graphics card. And that is definitely true. And you could definitely see it here. And I apologize for the glare. You could see that 20 frames per second is not good. And when we add a little bit more action to that scene, it drops down to, I believe, even 13 frames per second. So it's definitely not good. And something to consider when you're buying a notebook, you definitely want to get a notebook that has the latest generation. So make sure you do your homework because the last thing you want to do is buy a notebook with last gen CPU model. And this hit 83 degrees max, but it doesn't matter because we really can't game on the XPS 14Z. Let's move on to the MacBook Pro. Now, because it has that awesome retina display, we're going to have to zoom in on this one and see if it can do any better. And it should. This is running a quad core CPU. Now, not only is it running a quad core CPU, it's also running one of Nvidia's best mobile graphics card, which is the 650M. And as you can see, it's doing three times better than all of the other, or the other two notebooks that we had. Let's see the combined test. And it's actually moving some frame rates. Now remember, this is a performance test. You're not gonna see crazy 60 frames per second unless this thing was on liquid nitrogen, and, you know, a lot of other stuff, but it did very well at 2561. I have seen it uh, perform a little bit better, but this is the problem with a MacBook that, and mainly all the MacBooks that I've seen is that they overheat. And as you can see from the thermal, it reached 105 degrees. Two of the cores were hitting 105, so it's definitely throttling down. Like I said, I have seen this run much faster, about 2800 was a score, and that was using one of these cooling pads. So if you're thinking to buy any MacBook, like I said, if you look at some of my videos before, and I'll leave that link down below, MacBook Pros are notorious for being heat prone. They are very, very, they run very hot. Let's go ahead and clear the temperature now so that we can run Metro 2033 and see how it compares with the 9 series and XPS 14Z. I'm going to keep the resolution at 1366 by 768 on low quality. Just for this particular test, I will be bumping it up. I just want you guys to see how it compares with the XPS 14Z, which was that was the highest resolution. And we're getting very impressive frame rates definitely playable. So I would say we need to probably bump it up to at least a higher resolution of HD, 1920 by 1080. I figure most monitors out there or most people playing games are going to be playing at that type of resolution. We still have it at low quality, but we're getting very good frame rates. You know, 50 to 60 is very good. Um, not the best, of course, but definitely playable. And that's what you want. You want to be able to play a game. And you can definitely play high definition on low. Let's go ahead and see if we can bump it up to medium and if it's even playable at medium. So I'm going to go ahead and change the settings to medium. Go ahead and do that right now. Or normal. And we're still running DirectX 9. So... We'll be running DirectX 11 a little later. I just want you to guys be able to see on Metro 2033 since this is the game we've been testing. And it's not bad. It's actually what the other notebooks were getting, which was right about 30. So definitely interesting to see that, you know, HD, it's, I wouldn't want to play at this frame rate, but it's very good. I'm actually impressed that you could definitely play a game like this. Uh, on the MacBook Pro. Let's go ahead and bump it up to very high HD 
and see how it performs. Now we are going to be in an open area. There's a lot going on. As you can see, all the different particle effects, there's smoke, there's fire. Um, there's just a lot going on. It's stressing it out. So 2022 is not very good. But yeah, definitely uh, interesting to see how it compared with the other uh, notebooks. So this was a temperature, as I've said before, a just very, very hot machine. Now let's try a different game. Let's try Far Cry and let's try it on DirectX 11. So we'll be doing 1920 by 1080. There's no point in changing that. DirectX 11. So you're going to have all of the latest uh, features that, you know, game can, can bring to the table. And let's just see if uh, how it does. So we're getting about 28, 30 frames per second, which is not bad considering remember metro 2033 we were not running direct x 11 so that's actually very very good uh to say the least um is it playable well i would probably bump it down so let's go ahead and do that let's bump it down to direct x 9 kind of how we were doing on metro 2033 uh, we're gonna have to i believe restart the game yes so let's go ahead and restart and see how it does so I went ahead and restarted, and as you guys can see, it really didn't make that much of an improvement. And I'm going to show you guys that I am running DirectX 9 as opposed to 11. There it is right there, DirectX 9. And I know when, with Metro 2033, DirectX 11 and 9 makes a huge difference. It could be that Far Cry is just more of a demanding game, so it's always good to see this. Change the video quality to low to see if it will improve uh, the frame rate and it did a little bit we're probably getting about 5 to 10 fps more so if you're looking to play far cry you definitely have to turn the settings all the way down direct x9 to 11 really didn't make too much of a difference and hd sort of playable your call depending on the type of gamer that you are i just want to show you what you can expect when you play Far Cry, which is one of the latest games as of filming this video. Now that concludes part two, and why did I make these videos? Well, you see, I bought the MacBook Pro thinking that it was going to replace all of my other notebooks. I was tired of having, you know, this notebook does this for this, and I just figured I want to have one powerful notebook that does it all. Well, it turns out that that was not the case. You see, I'm an average consumer just like yourself, and I really thought that the MacBook Pro was going to just be that notebook, and it turns out that it wasn't for me. Yes, what you're about to hear next is my opinion. This has nothing to do with Apple. This has nothing to do with the MacBook Pro. This is just my personal experience with using these devices or notebooks. Now, the biggest issue I had was a lot of things that I do on a day-to-day -day basis, and by the way, I use Photoshop, I use Premiere almost every single day. These are things that I use on my Samsung, which did very well. Now, yes, we did see in part one that the MacBook Pro did render the movie twice as fast. I can agree with that. But one thing that you guys don't understand, remember, this is my opinion. Everybody who has, different, has a different workflow and how they do things. Whenever I'm rendering a movie, I minimize it. I started doing other things. See, I'm not tied up trying to render this movie and I'm just waiting, you know, drinking coffee. I'm doing other things while I'm rendering that movie. I'm either creating a thumbnail or I'm doing something with Photoshop. So I don't mind waiting five minutes, 10 minutes, however long I have to wait for that movie to render. So it's not a problem using the 9 series. So when I bought the MacBook Pro, I really thought that it was just going to be that much faster. I was, I, I thought that I was going to be able to Photoshop an image, not that I was going to do it quicker, but that things were going to be a little bit smoother. And that was not the case. The biggest drawback for me was the battery life. The MacBook Pro, I'm lucky if I even get four hours. Now I know some of you out there that have these um, notebooks or the MacBook Pro Retina are going to say, oh, I get five, six hours. But remember, I use my notebook different than you. So everybody's going to claim whatever they want. I'm just telling you that I'm lucky if I get three hours out of it. And I use my MacBook to the max. I'm not sitting there web browsing. So the reason why I made these videos is to show you that you don't always get what you expect. 
And also the underdog, or in this case, the Samsung, which was the lower spec when you compared them all together. Well, that would be between the Samsung and the, X the XPS 14Z. It's a kind of a toss up. Anyhow, uh, ended up being a very good laptop. So when you're looking to buy a laptop, what did we learn is that you want to get the most up to date modern CPU. It makes a really big difference. Now, also, if you can get one with a graphics card, a dedicated graphics card, even better. As you can see with the MacBook Pro, it did make a big difference. Also, it is running quad core. So there's a lot of things to consider. Uh, going, spending more doesn't mean you're gonna get more. Uh, but again, it just really depends on the workflow. Anyhow, I'm just jibber jabbering. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I put a lot of time into this video. You guys have no idea how much time it takes to install all of these different software and all the three notebooks. So I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And maybe I'll make a part three depending on the comments. You guys let me know. Should I make a part three? Should I throw in something else in the mix? It's up to you. Otherwise, I'll see you in my next video. Follow me on Google Plus and Twitter. I've left those links below. Adios.